that that's okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, it feels very strange sitting down and actually filming um, a video to camera like this. This video today is about five tips, I think there's five, there's six actually. <laughs> it's about six tips for getting started as a writer. So I have two videos on my channel now. One is a day in the life of a writer and the other one is a second day in the life of a writer. And it follows my kind of journey in writing my first non-fiction book, which has just been submitted to the publisher. Yay! <laughs> um, and the first one was probably, I think it was published about six months ago. So that was when I was about halfway into the research and writing process of my book. And the other one, which was released just a few weeks ago, was kind of the last stages, really. And it, they're both my most popular videos on my channel. And people seem to really like them. And I had loads of questions on the actual videos of how to get started as a writer, tips for being so motivated, um, a few different things. So what I said on that um, comment section and what I'm doing today is basically a video which is my tips for getting started as a writer. Um, and these tips aren't, oh, got something on my chin. Hairy chin. <laughs> It's a problem when you have a cat, you get hair everywhere. Um, yeah, these are, they're not like, I'm not saying this is how you have to get started as a writer, and I'm not saying that if you do these six things, you will become a really successful writer. All these are, are some tips from my experience of how I got started, and just a little bit of, hopefully, helpful information. So I'll get started because I don't want to end up with an hour's footage. <laughs> also, I don't know how long my camera batteries are going to last, so that could be interesting. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so number one, get something down on paper. This is probably one of those things that most people be like, well, obviously, like I already get loads of stuff down on paper. I don't necessarily mean just get things written down, although that can be a really, really good first step. I mean it more in terms of get everything out of your head and onto paper. It's really hard when you're a creative person or you're, you want to be a writer, it can feel really daunting getting those ideas out of your head and onto paper. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that you should sit down and start to write a book because I actually think there's a couple of steps you can do in before that really that will help you to focus. But get those ideas and get those thoughts out of your head and down onto paper because you will feel so much better afterwards. I use Microsoft OneNote, which is um, part of the Microsoft Office pack. It's basically like a notepad, but you can categorise everything. So you can have, you start off with like your categories on the left and then there's a column next to that that is pages. And then next to that, there's your actual note page. And then on the page itself, that's where I have the information. Now, if you're right, wanting to write fiction, what I tend to do is I have a fiction ideas um, section in my OneNote. And then each page that I create is my new idea. So I think I've got something like 12 or 13 ideas written down in there at the moment. And they can come from anywhere. You know, I might be sat watching the telly with Tom. I might be doing some other type of writing. But ideas can suddenly pop into my head. And rather than thinking, oh, well, I'll write it down when I get home, because that never happens, I have a couple of methods for getting them down onto paper. The first one is that I write it into one note. So if I happen to be at home, then I will write it in there. Now, if I'm out of the house, then obviously I don't have my laptop with me, or sometimes I don't. So what I tend to do is use the little notes section in my mobile um, and I just write, again, write it down in an individual note and then I will transfer it into one note. Or if you're like me and you frequently forget things that you've written in your note section, I, oh, some, bleh, <laughs> I sometimes email myself. So I'll write the idea or the quote or whatever in an email and I'll send it to myself. And then the next day when I come into work, I see that I've got an email, that idea, and I then just transfer it into my OneNote. So there's lots of different ways that you can do that. Lots of different ways that you can get your ideas out onto paper. But I honestly think that getting your ideas down is the best and first step that you can do if you want to be a writer. 
it's just about getting it out of your head because if it's always in your head it'll never be on paper and if it's never on paper then you'll never be a writer so just get it down onto paper that's my first and probably most important tip okay number two keep going and i know that sounds really simple as, as well but you really need to keep going and persevere with your writing it can be so hard sometimes when you're not in the mood to write or when you feel like you've written everything that's in your head and you're blank it can be really hard to keep going and i have to say for me fiction is the most hardest thing for me to keep going with because with fiction writing you write your book first and then you send it to a publisher to be published and so there's no deadline there's no pressure to finish it in a certain time there's nobody who's expecting anything from you with your book and so fiction writing can be really hard to push yourself to complete um, but with fiction writing if that's really what you're wanting to do and you're hoping for a tip in terms of getting you know started in that way I would just say keep going even if you think that what you're writing is absolute garbage keep doing it because you can always go back and revise even if all you're doing is writing bullet points of a scene you might say you know man woman bar two drinks order the same drink only one comes do they share or do they ignore each other that could be the start of your book and that could be your idea but you might not be in the place to really flesh that scene out. You might actually be really wanting to write the scene at the end of the book, where they fall out and meet on San Francisco Bridge or something. Just, like I say, keep going. It, choose what you want to write and write it, because you're always going to write better something that you want to write. But I actually think that on days where you don't feel like writing, it's still important to try and push yourself to do something because the more you write the better you get at it so you know i'm not saying that you have to sit there and write when your head's really not into it but try and do something else try and do a different writing project Swip, switch 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 things up Swip? is swip a word it's not <laughs> but you can make words up when you're a writer that's what i say <laughs> so swip your um project over and do different things but most importantly keep going that's honestly you'll feel so much better at the end of the day if you've woken up and you think i am not in the mood to write today but you push yourself to do at least something like I say even if it's bullet points a plan a strategy even if you cover your wall in paper and just map out your characters and your timeline just do something because you will feel so much better at the end of the day. Okay, number three, work out what times work best for you. Um, now, I will talk first about how to manage it if you are working, and then I'll go on to if you're not, because I'm guessing that most people, when they first start writing, will do it in their spare time, as opposed to jumping straight into doing it as a career. So I'll start with that first. Um, I guess my best tip really if you are trying to fit it in around work is to still try and find out what times of the day work best for you and um, I know some people that have done um, degrees and things around work and they've actually found that getting to work early in the morning and sitting at their desk at work for an hour or two hours doing their university work or doing writing or whatever and then starting work at nine o'clock works best for them because they're most productive in the morning now obviously that depends on whether your boss is going to let you into the office at seven o'clock in the morning um but if you are lucky enough to have that kind of position and you know that early morning working is for you then perhaps that's an option similarly you might want to stay at the end of work at the end of the day um, i know for a lot of people home is a manic place where you know you might have kids a partner pets family and just generally trying to get through an evening with dinner and all the chores that need to be done around a house is enough at the end of a working day so if you want to take an hour after work and stay at work and do a little bit of writing then again i think that's a pretty good thing to do because you're setting yourself a target every day 
you've set that time aside and you know that you're there to do your writing, you're less likely to get distracted by the kids and by the work, by the food, by the wine, <laughs> by the Great British Bake Off or anything else that you're going to get distracted by. Um, but I know that that's not always possible. Um, again, you might be one of those people who works best at two o'clock in the morning. Just find out which times of day are going to be most convenient for you and which you're going to be the most productive. So I personally work full time as a writer and I've been really lucky to be able to do that. If you are in the position where you know you're going to have a set amount of time that you can really immerse yourself in your writing, the one thing you need to do is work out when you're going to be the most productive. Now for me, I get up with Tom, um, I get ready for the day and I always make sure, even though I'm working at home, I always make sure that I'm wearing work clothes. I never stay in my pyjamas all day. It just doesn't encourage positive working attitudes. So I get dressed and as soon as Tom goes to work, I will have a coffee, give myself probably about half an hour just to come round and kind of get ready for the day. And then I work from probably about nine o'clock until midday. And midday is not like 12 noon, it's whenever around lunchtime that I feel like finishing. And then usually early to mid-afternoon is my non-productive time. So I don't work usually between kind of one and three or maybe even one and four. Um, it's just not a productive time, so I don't write in that time. Now because I do work from home and because I am my own boss, I can work any hours that I want to. So generally I will come back to work at four o'clock and I might only work for an hour one day until five but I might work until seven another day. So for example today Tom's got some testing on at CERN so he potentially could not be home until eight o'clock. I would rather work and then when Tom comes home I break off and we have dinner and chat and catch up on the day. So that's what works best for me. I'm not a nighttime writer. I love bed. <laughs> I love my bed. I love being asleep. There is nothing better, I don't think, than the feeling of when you first lie down in bed on a night. Oh, I love that feeling. So unfortunately, I'm not a nighttime writer. Call that breaking the stereotype if you want, but I'm just not. But for you, find what works out best for you and do that. That's definitely important. God, I'm only on number four. This is so long already. I'm really sorry. If you're like, woman, just get on with the points. <laughs> I am, I promise. Okay, so at number four, voluntary writing gigs. Now, this is how I really got started, how I got my portfolio of work up and, up and running, was by doing voluntary writing. And I think it's a really good way, if you don't have much experience, to A, get some of that experience, to learn the disciplines and the speed of writing, and to get that portfolio up to give to prospective clients in the future. So I write, as I've said, I write for Settle Stories. Now they're a charity, um, so I write as a volunteer for them. I've written for them for, gosh, 12, 18 months now. And even though I have other paid work now, I still write for them because I actually really enjoy writing for them and they're a lovely company and they're based around literacy, storytelling, reading and so it's really kind of within my kind of interest area so I really enjoy writing for them so I still do it but when I first started writing um, I saw an advert for voluntary writers and so I just got in touch with them and said look this is the experience that I have um, I don't have a great deal but I'm looking to build up my portfolio but yeah I started writing for them and I've been doing it since. Um, so yeah, voluntary writing, do it. Um, but the one thing I would say is make sure you write about something that you're passionate about. Don't just go for every gig you can get hold of because you'll probably find yourself spreading yourself too thin and also your work won't be good enough quality and you really want to be sending and writing. No, you really want to be writing your best work so that you can send that best work on to prospective people in the future. Well, I've already done number five. <laughs> I've just said it then. So anyway, I'll do it again. So number five is only write about what you're passionate about. And that's what I've just kind of covered in the last point, really. 
but like I said, it can be really tempting sometimes to take a paid gig over a voluntary one because obviously you're getting money in and you know writing is not a well-paid job on the whole um, you often have to put in hours, months, years of work before you really start to get money back um, so you know it can be tempting when you're struggling in those first few months to take whatever pays but you, like I've said before, you really want to be writing the best work that you can do and if you're not passionate or even interested in the topic that you're writing about, you're just not going to do a good job and you're not going to have that best work to send to people. But if you're passionate about it and you know you really want to be a writer, then you're going to do the legwork, you know, you're going to go out there and look for all the best jobs. You're going to try and find voluntary writing jobs that mean something. Um, you know, and you do maybe have to persevere. You're going to get a lot of letters back saying, no, sorry, we don't need anybody at the moment, or, you know, sorry, you weren't quite successful for this gig. But, you know, if you if this is what you want to do, if this is what you're passionate about, then you'll keep going. And that's what... Okay, and finally, number six is discipline. So, when you work from home, when you are a freelance writer, especially if you're doing it full-time, it seems like you have all the time in the world especially if you have a deadline that is you know a month away or like with me and my book that I've just submitted my deadline was a year away and so it can be really tempting to think oh well, I don't have to do that today I'll you know I'll catch up on Bake Off or oh well I'll make some homemade soup for my lunch or you know you find you, you do find yourself getting distracted by jobs around the house or by the internet YouTube, you know, catch up TV, lots of different things. But generally, you have to come up with a way to pull yourself back from those distractions. Now, I have a planner somewhere, don't know where it is. Oh, it's over there. I won't show it you, but I've actually shown it on my second day in the life of a writer video. So if you're interested in seeing the actual tools that I use to schedule my day, then go and have a look at that video because it's on there. So I'll always have a list of jobs to do. And I think that's the most important thing for me is that if I know I have jobs that I can tick off, then it helps me to compartmentalise the work and it helps me not to feel like I've just got this huge weight of stuff on my shoulders that needs to be done. I've actually got a list. I can think it through quite is analytically the right word. And again, that's really helpful for if I'm working on one thing and I'm either getting bored or my brain's not working properly or I'm just not in the right mood for it, I can do something else off the list again. So there's always something else for me to fill my time up with. Um, and that way I'm being productive, but I'm also working in a way that's best for me. Um, the other, another really good tip that I use in terms of discipline is I tend to break down the work that I'm doing. So I'll come into the office and I know I've got, you know, 100, 200, 300 pages of books to read. And so what I tend to do is I get those little, you know, the little post-it notes, they're like tiny little dividers. Um, I'll get those and I either pop them in the book at the chapter divides or if the it's a book with really long chapters. I might divide it off by every 50 pages or so. And then I'll read through and I'll be like, right, I need to read the next, well, 50 pages is a bit long, isn't it? Let's be honest. I might say, right, I need to read the next 20 pages and then I can have a break. So I'll do that work. And I'm not setting myself a time to do it by, I'm setting it by the amount of work that needs to be done. So I'll say, right, read those 20 pages and then you can have lunch. Or read those 20 pages and then you can watch an episode of The Walking Dead, which is what I'm catching up on at the moment. So it's usually a small, small thing like finish writing that paragraph and you can go make a coffee. And it sounds really, it probably sounds a bit silly, but it's worked for me since I was at university because I did an English degree there were so many books I had to read every week that that was the only way that I got through them every day you know I might spend an entire day reading Oliver Twits and that is a long book um, but if you divide that book down by every 30 pages you do something or you get something it makes it a lot easier so that is probably one of my biggest tips for actually getting through difficult jobs or getting through 
big books that you have to read or pieces of research or even pieces of writing if you know that you know you've got a really difficult article to write for somebody and you're struggling with it say right okay I am going to spend the next half an hour writing the best that I can and then I'm going to go away I'm going to have a coffee and a bun <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and I'll reread it in an hour that's fine that's going to work for you because you know that you've done the job you've given yourself a bit of a reward and then you know you need to get back on it again and that really works for me um, so I think I think that's about it those are the six tips that I've written down anyway <laughs> when preparing for this video um, I'm probably going to stop filming and think of like you know at least another 10 tips that I should have put in the video um, the thing is there are loads of how to become a writer videos on YouTube and everyone's tips are different I'm sure there are some that we all say. I mean, I literally haven't watched anybody else's how to write, become a writer videos because they want to get caught up in what tips I should give you. I just wanted to give you the tips that work best for me. Um, but there are hundreds of videos out there on YouTube and I do encourage you to watch as many of them um, as you can if you are wanting to start as a writer because the more tips you get, then hopefully, uh, the kind of more informed you are before you start your own writing. I am going to put into, into the description a couple of resources that I found really useful in terms of finding writing jobs. Um, just because if you are wanting to look for some work, it's always helpful to have somebody who is already in that position, who can just give you a little bit of help and guidance. And so, if there are any more tips that I think of that I think are really useful or if I find any more websites or resources that you could use I'll link all of those in the description box underneath and then you can use that as a resource area as well. So that's the end of this video. I'm not sure what it's going to be like when I come to edit it. I really hope it's good because I know people have been wanting something like this from me and I really want to deliver and make it a good video. Hope it's not too long. Um, and if there's anything else you want to know about my writing, about how I write, I can't even think now of what you would want to know, but um, if there are anything, any video ideas that you want from me, um, just let me know, just get, send me a comment in the, bo in the bottom, don't send me a comment in the bottom, that sounds a bit rude, <laughs> put a comment below the video and um, yeah, I always reply to comments so I'll see what I can do. Alright, have a lovely day and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Okay, and then finally, number six is... Um, ugh. What is number six? Discipline. <laughs>